Richard. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Beth Herrick. I'm the program specialist here at Morris Reeves Library, and I'm so happy to welcome you all to this artist talk for Bombshells. To um, thank the friends of Morris Reeves Library, of whom we have at least one board member here, and probably several members. If you want to know more about the friends of Morris Reeves Library, who provide funding for all of our events and programs and many of our other wonderful things at the library. You can see me afterwards and we've got some envelopes um, that share a little bit about the mission of the agency that uh, supports Morris and Reeves Library. And now, on to bombshells. Uh, we're all here tonight because um, this body of work is incredible. And um, I've been, if you're like me, You've been a fan of Pam's work uh, for a long time. Pam Frazier is an amazing artist. Um, sometimes you know that she's done the art, as in uh, the collaboration with the children's book series. I've got my own personal copy um, out there on display, and then the library's got copies of those as well. Um, so sometimes you know she's done the art. Other times, you see like a ticket for an event or you know promotions for things in the community, and she's been behind the scenes quietly doing those things. So uh, for those of us who've known and followed Pam's work for a while, uh, it's certainly fun to see this body of work, my favorite of her bodies of work here tonight. Um, I'm happy to know uh, Pam as both an artist and a collaborator that I've been able to work with in the past, um, a bombshell herself, and a friend. Uh, <laughs> isn't it true? Oh. It's true. So I better stop on that and, and introduce Pam Frazier, the artist of Bob Shows. Um, I've already lost two friends. mics. So um, she also owns Frazier Design. So if you're interested in, in any work or collaborative uh, partnerships, you can find her at Frazier Design. That's a lot. And um, of stuff. I know she's excited to talk about the body of work that's here. She's got another body of the similar work over at the Martha Dwyer Center. And tonight she's sharing four new pieces. So thank you, Pam. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, I'm Pam Frazier, and um, I'm here with my portraits um, that I've called palm shells. Um, there's kind of a long, not really a long story, but I got here in kind of a roundabout way. Um, 2020 came along, and my life completely changed like everyone else's. I lost all my work. I had moved, so I was away from all my friends. And if you knew me while I was here, I had stuff going on at my house all the time. So it was a huge transition. And that whole year, and some of you may have already heard the story, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating it, but that whole year I laid in bed and cried because I was just, I was lost. I didn't have my work. I'm always a very busy person. So when 2021 rolled around, I said, that's not gonna happen this year. I'm going to assign myself something. Since I don't have any assignments, I'm gonna assign myself something. So I decided to do a bunch of portraits, not these, um, that were legends of Star Jeanette. So some of the artists who had recorded at here at the Whitewater Gorge, I decided to do those portraits. And there was 33 of those. And I had a show last year uh, that opened. So some friends of mine were following me on Facebook. And one particular friend, his name is Tyler Conley. He was actually a student here at Earlham that I met you know, through other friends in, in Indianapolis. And he contacted me and said, hey, I saw some of your portraits and I have a c colleague that I work with and she is, was up for a very important position in the church. And she got passed over by a man. So I wanna give her something that says I care and you know, I'm, I'm backing you and know that you were passed over just because you were a woman. And he goes, so I want you to do a portrait of a famous woman. And he gave me several options to do. And I, I chose RGB. And he said, also on the side, and we're all adults here, so I'm going to say it. Um, I want you to write F misogyny on the side of it in big, bold letters. And that's going to be my gift to her. And so I was sharing that online. And a former client of mine, who I hadn't talked to in probably 10 years, who owns a jewelry store in Zionsville, gave me a call. And he goes, we want to hang that F misogyny show. I'm like, 
there's no show. There's not even another portrait. There's just the one portrait and it was a commission. But I thought, well, let's go with it. Let's start doing these. So last October, I started painting these F misogyny portraits. Now, those folks up in Zionsville are very, I wouldn't say militant, but they're good liberals, and they advertised it as that in their store. And I think it went very well, um, but I continued to do them. And as we thought about taking this other places, we thought, well, maybe that name is not going to be like totally welcoming to everyone. So then the name changes started. So I came up with influential feminists. Well, that didn't quite work either because I'm not sure every woman even the ones I've painted, would identify as a feminist. So within these like portraits, there are also smaller collections. So one of my smaller ones was going to be a trio of bombshells, traditional bombshells. I was going to do um, Eartha Kitt, um, Hedy Lamarr, and there's one other, and I'm going to forget who it is. But, um, my friend Lisa and I were talking about the name Bombshells, and she goes, that's a perfect name for the collection. It's catchy, it is, you know, go for all audiences, and then I also like the kind of wink to it, because normally when you call a woman a bombshell, it's linked to her physical appearance. And this way, it can be linked to any woman. You take the physical appearance of like the judgments we make on what people look like away, all you have is your character. And that's why I like that title so much. So that's why we changed it. So, like I said, I've been doing these for, since October, and it's just grown and grown. Um, there are, I believe, 31 portraits now. And um, I just thought I'd show you my list, um, lists of things. This is my first one. Okay, you see it's all marked up and messed up. But there's still ones on here that I have not done. But what became really clear when I started to do these were my own biases and my own judgments and the, the people I chose as my heroes. But what I did was I ended up learning about, I mean, untold numbers of women I had never heard of in my education. And so it's been a great education for me. It also is teaching me how to paint. I mean, now I've been painting almost every day for two years, and I feel like I am getting better, which just shows that you know, practice does kind of make, well, almost perfect. But um, it's, so I was gonna show you the rest of my list. I mean, I've got this list. This is, you know, I haven't even marked one off there. Um, and then more. And you can see from the table, um, my methods of collecting this stuff is probably not the best. It's just like a mismatch of pictures, of quotes, of writing, of like little sketches that I do. And I still keep getting more and more um, suggestions from people, which is awesome. Because sometimes it's people I have forgotten or just have never even heard of. So um, that's where we're at with it. Um, I'm hoping that I, you know, I get to travel more with this show as it grows because, I mean, I really do have over 100 people on my list. And I just feel it's my life's work. Um, I, I, ironically, I always wanted to be a painter. When I was in college, I got done with my undergrad, and I really wanted to teach drawing or painting on the college level. But the money wasn't there then. So it must not have been time for me to do it. But this just kind of grew organically. And so now I feel it's my time to paint. And, I, you know, I don't pretend that these are masterpieces. I feel like I have more to go and more to learn. But, you know, it's not just the story of the women. It's the story of the project itself for me. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, by showing these women and, you know, and I also, oh, I forgot to mention that I also write their, the quotes on the sides, which gives it another dimensionality to the work. Um, but I'm hoping it brings some attention to women that people may not have remembered, or even the stories of why these women are my heroes or someone else's heroes. Um, and I think that's about the whole story of how this came to be. So if anyone has questions, um, 
Oh, Renee. Tell us why you picked each of those. I'm sorry? Tell us why you picked each of those. Um, so Eartha Kitt was going to be my like mini bombshell series. I still can't remember the third one. Rita Marino is the third one. Um, so yes, that's Eartha Kitt, because Marilyn Albright, just because I hadn't thought of her in a while. And then when I you know, read she had passed away, I started looking at some of the things she's done and some of the little um, oh, um, tributes that people have talked about her. I mean, she was really something else. So I just really felt I wanted to paint her. Um, well, Katanji, a judge, Judge Jackson is what I'm going to call her. Um, I watched the hearings while I was doing this. And I think she was just, so, I'm so inspired by her. Um, and then the last one is um, Alens Alina Zelenska, the first lady of Ukraine, which I felt is very important. So, you know, I have tons of historic names on here, but I get t torn away by current events a lot of times. And I think that makes it a lot more interesting overall. I mean, because none of these women would have been here without the historical ones. Um, and some of the future women wouldn't be here without these folks. Well, and, ex and you know, it turned out that last, this month is still, um, I said, um, Women in History Month. So that's kind of nice. Um, but I mean, every day should be Women's Day, right? I mean, I just am so inspired by them and learning more and more every day. So, Jack? How did your uh, choice of color connect to the subject? Well, you know, those, it really isn't planned so much. When I go in, I do a quick sketch and then add color. And then it, it's kind of whatever moves me or whatever I think will bring out the face the best. I like yellow backgrounds because it really pops those, but blue seemed to fit Eartha. And uh, well, yeah, I just feel like the yellow is kind of a halo-y kind of effect too. I mean, I just like that. Um, the blue obviously is for, you know, Ukraine's flag, but that was kind of, um, that was my decision on that one. The others, it's just whatever I think will look best. And you know, my first portraits that I was doing were all, they were like kind of monochromatic and they were all bright colors, not skin tones. So now I'm kind of learning about how to manage skin tones, which is difficult, I think. But each one gets a little better, I think. I, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, my painting is not realism. Um, I'm not sure how I would define it. To me, they kind of look like comics because of the bright, kind of outliney kind of looks to them. Yeah. Yes. Didn't you say that during your process at some point, someone contacted you about a personal um, relative, a wife of theirs, that they wanted to be included in the original exhibit? Didn't you do oh. some personal? Yes, so, so this will be kind of a little interesting story. So it occurred to me that these women are famous. It also occurred to me there's tons of women in our community that are, you know, our modern day feminists are strong women that we recognize or work with, et cetera. So as I was thinking about that, I th the first person I thought of was Bonnie Miller. I don't know how many know Bonnie Miller. Uh, she works at Civic. And I, always, I just love how she just says what she says. And, you know, she, there's a lot of strength in her. And so I wanted to do a portrait of her. So I approached her and I said, hey, I want to do a portrait of you. This is why. And she goes, oh, no, not of me. Do my mom. And she sent me a picture of her mom immediately and a, two paragraphs of why her mom should be that. So I love that. So I put it on Facebook. I said, does anyone know people in their community that you would like to not really nominate, but would you like me to paint? And right away, I don't know if, oh, gosh, Aria, who owns the, what's her tattoo? Is it Black Dog? Oh, oh, the terror, it, yeah, the terror, 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 thank you, yes, Terra Tattoo. Her, as not five minutes after I posted that, her husband sent me something that made me cry. It was so amazing. I want you to paint Aria because of this. And it's just this beautiful like tribute to her, but not just a tribute to because they're married, but because of what she does in the community. So I painted her, and then Allison Zigel also contacted me right away and said, I want you to paint my mom. 
Mary Jo Clark. So I had three bombshells. It wasn't bombshells right then. Um, but I had three of those folks, and I would still absolutely love suggestions for that because I think that's very important to recognize that you may be working in your community at the grassroots level as a strong woman, woman to your neighbors or friends, and I think that's just as important. Yes? When you think out with the bombshells change, I thought there was a double entendre over explosive ordinance in the community. <laughs> well, that's interesting, but of course it works uh, that way. Being a good example. Uh, that, True, you know, yes, but that's a good way to think of it as well, yes. change makers in your world. I think the bombshells has a lot of meanings to a lot of people, so I think that's, that was really the right name yeah, the for it. it. It's, it's good, yes. Perfect. Yeah, I agree. Pam, you really got the eyes. Yeah. I could look at the eyes and know who most of them are if I knew who they were to begin with. You really Thank you. got it. Yeah. Thank you. Speaking yeah. of eyes, is there anything behind which people you have looking at the view and which people you have looking at that? No. Uh, so I work all from photographs, obviously. I mean, and photos I didn't take. So that's the disclaimer right there. Uh, but I do look for photos that aren't your standard, usually standard look for that person. For instance, um, I did a giant, this was not this collection, but I did a giant portrait of um, Louis Armstrong. But I did not want some cheesy smiling thing of Louis Armstrong because I know his life was no picnic. So I picked out a, a photograph that I had never seen before where he was much more moodier. He looked more like, not really necessarily approachable. So that's totally opposite of what he usually is. Um, and then some other things, I try and find some unusual, unseen photographs. Some of those don't exist for some people, but I do try and pick them that way. Anyone else? Yes. So what drew you to people? Because a lot of your subject matter has been human beings. So what made you decide that that's where you wanted to focus? I think it's because of the, the Star Jeanette collection which is one I wanted to do for a very long time. Uh, and that got me working on portraits. And I'm not a portrait person. I, I actually rarely did them until then, at least not a lot of them. Um, so that's kind of how that happened. So you know, when someone asks for an exhibit that there's only one painting, you decide, OK, I'm going to be a portrait artist now for a while. <laughs> um, but I think in general, it's helped me with all my work that concentrated just every day being in it has really helped. Do you work on one at a time and do it straight through from beginning to end or do you move around uh, from painting? No, I had these three going at the same time. I have two there that are going to be part of a commission that someone commissioned me to do um, 13 portraits of rock and roll women. And those are just beginning and that's at the really awkward stage that I really want to give up. But I do have three of those going at once. Because if you get frustrated with one, you can ruin it really, really fast and then not want to do it. So it helps to move from one to another for me, anyway. So. Yes. So along those lines, how did you decide which media you would use? Well, I have never painted an oil painting, ever. So acrylics are my, kind of my thing. They dry real fa really fast and I kind of like to paint fast, probably faster than most people. If I had to do oils, I may have had five by now instead of 30. You know, they just, it's just easier to work with for me. Yeah. Yes? So how much research do you do um, on each woman before you figure out how you want to present them? Well, some more than others. Um, some I've heard of quite a bit, and I'm fans of theirs. So I already know a lot about them. Uh, for instance, um, I did a portrait of a woman. Her name is Polly Murray. Polly Murray is her name. And I had never heard of her before, which seems miraculous after I learned more about her. There's a um, current documentary out about her life, and she is amazing. So I, did not, I decided to do her portrait after I watched that. And then there's other people that I look more and more into. Or I just actually go and look for diverse people because my list was pretty not diverse. You know, I looked for 
an American Indian in particular. And there's lots of them, but I picked one who wrote the first symphony that was actually performed in New York City. And she was an activist too. So I, I thought, that's cool. Even, if you just read even a little bit of their bios, you know, you can, that's fantastic. But it turns out if you like look further into what they've done, they've done tons of stuff. It's not just one thing. They're not just feminists or people who stand up for women's rights or, or just lawyers or just ministers. Most of these women have done a million things you would never know about, except for the stuff that's kind of well known. Yes? How do you learn to paint hair? Um, I'm learning. <laughs> it's not, so, I'm not a very, I'm not a technical artist. I mean, I'm not like going by certain rules. I just kind of grow in there. And then you figure out ways that work better than others. Um, but you know, for me, drawing and painting is mostly just looking at the subject. It's not like I'm deciding, um, you know, I'm going to approach it this way. I'm going to, you know, start the hair this way. It's like I just keep building on it, especially with the um, Alina one. I had no idea what was going on with the hair, but it just started developing because I just kept looking. And then there's a point on these where I stop looking and just I already have the face in there, and I just go. So some of these are not you know, exact replicas of that person. I don't want them to be, necessarily. They're more, they're more your artistic interpretation of what, what your vision is, what you see them. Exactly. How you see them. Yeah, and that's, that's, like, that's what I like energy. about them, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's what draws me to a lot of your art, is that you can see your own artistic expression in them. Like, you know who it is, but you see that you put your, you know, as they say, your spin on it, so. Well, it helps to have the quotes, because I do write their names on there, just in case. So, yeah. So I'm interested, were there any in the series that you felt like, I should include this person, but it wasn't somebody you really connected with? Or are these all people that were like, no, I, could, I, I connected with them, and that's why they're included? Well, I feel like I've connected with some of them. An interesting choice for me was Liz Cheney, because I do not go along with all her, um, I guess, her platform as a senator. Um, she's a senator, right? I just said that right, yes. Um, but I think that she has more character than anyone else in Congress right now. And I really respect that, even though I do not agree with her policies. Not at all. But I think she's worthwhile. And I think it's worthwhile to recognize folks that don't 100% agree with you. I mean, they still have something to give. So. Anyone else? Which came first? The quote or the woman? You know, like, I just wonder. The woman always comes first. The woman always comes first. Mm -hmm. Do you have any process for choosing your quote? Is it? I just look and see which one moves me. Yeah. On a lot of these prints, if people order them, I offer to write their favorite quote from that woman on there. So it makes them especially theirs. I mean, yeah, a print I can do a million of, but I'll, I would hand letter that. So that helps it make it unique, even if you get an, just, a, just a print. Yeah. Yeah. How do you decide what size you're going to work in? Because the ones upstairs, much smaller. These are very large. How do you determine? Does it have anything to do with the size of the personality you're painting? No, <laughs> not at all. I, I started doing smaller ones just because it was easier to move around. Because when you get like 30 some paint, you know, in the back of your scion, it's logistics. Yes, um, but I prefer to work big. I would even prefer to go bigger than this. Because when I get to those 12 by 12s, I just like. I can't be f as free. So I feel very confined by the smaller ones. Yeah. I really like the boldness of those, and the color and style, too, is really in your face powerful, which goes perfectly with the subject. Yeah. So, on your typical day, do you have a routine? Do you have a schedule? Do you say, I'm going to allot so much time to this part, and so much time to painting today, and so much, or do you just kind of go? With I'm really not that organized uh, because I, have, I still have some graphic design stuff. Um, so 
usually I try and get one or two days of nothing but painting, but you, you always get interrupted. That's probably another reason why I do two and three at a time, because if I get pulled away, but then, you know, like the last two weeks, I did these four in the last two weeks, I was just had that energy going, so I just went with it as much as possible. Yes. For what you're describing, you sound like a kinesthetic painter. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, movement. Mm -hmm. you movement? Know, like, you know, like, you think, you listen to music, or you dance, or, you or I, I watch movies a lot, or listen to the news, which is probably not the greatest thing. But that's where I get some of my ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's it. I have a feeling that we could keep Pam here all yeah. night <laughs> talking about her beautiful work. Um, but thank you so much, Pam. Yeah, thank you, Beth. Thank you.